Greetings, my name is Torden, and this is Advanced Voxelmancy 102. In today's installment, we're going to discuss the tools of the trade and talk a little bit about offset voxels. So the first thing is that I would like to talk a little bit more about reactors. So this is a reactor. A reactor is simply eight voxels set with a space in between them. There's some fancier versions. I prefer to use smaller blocks than full-size blocks for mine. But really all we're doing when we talk about a reactor is talking about this. And the reason we have this is because it's not always clear uh, for a, var a target voxel where its uh, vertices actually are. So what we can do is if we pick up a reactor here and we place it around a target voxel, what it does is it reacts to that target voxel and provides for us a location of each of the vertices. And you see in this particular case, two of the vertices have been pushed to the center of the slope right here. And that's all a reactor is for. In this particular uh, voxel wedge here, we actually have a series, a progressive series of points. So basically, this is what we call the 1 8 wedge, and it's essentially um, a point here in the center, and then in 1 8 increments between the center and the voxel wall, uh, we move out. So we move uh, an eighth of a voxel, and another eighth of a voxel, and another eighth of a voxel, and another eighth, etc. Um, and it's 1 8 increments out to the range of movement of the point. So halfway up here, or four ticks in, one, two, three, four, is actually the voxel wall. And then four more ticks out to uh, half a voxel away from the voxel wall. All right. Um, the, and we'll get more into the wedge later. Uh, one of the things I would like to point out, uh, this question is going to come up a lot, is where do you get, how do you get your hands on this wedge? Um, and there will be, there have been uh, standard libraries out there. The 1 8 voxel wedge, this one, um, I give away for free. So it'll show up in most of the libraries. If you have trouble getting it, um, reach out to me in game. I can give you a location where you can come pick up a blueprint for this voxel wedge um, and then just deploy it yourself so that you have it. Um, I'm going to talk throughout the course of these advanced voxel Mancy videos on how to make the voxel wedge, how it exists, um, but you don't have to rederive the entire thing. It's uh, There's actually a lot of work that goes into making this, um, and it's been done already, so you don't need to feel like you need to do it again. But before you start playing with the voxel wedge, it's helpful to understand what it is that it is and how it works and why you use it, and that's what the point to these videos is. Um, it's about how to very specifically manipulate these vertices to be where you want them to be. Um, but to do that, you have to understand a little bit about how it works. So today's tools of the trade. So the first one here is, like I said, the reactor. The second one is um, what I call a area shrink tool. Um, it's really just an arbitrary name. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to place an X of voxels. Now this is just, uh, like I put the blocks on the, on the ground over here, this is just so I know where I'm working. A lot of these, the, the points inside of these reactors is so small that it's difficult to see. And sometimes I want to be able to pick up a voxel that's either not actually in the center or so small that it's difficult to find. And so I'm creating here uh, something that basically provides handles. So the first thing I'm going to do is create this X right here. Then I'm going to pick a different color. Obviously, which color is irrelevant, um, but I'm going to pick a different color. Um, and I'm going to place uh, one, two, three, four, five space in between, and then another one, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then here. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and make a, a cube version of this. So I'm just going to go out to here. I'm going to uh, hold on the R key and use the mouse wheel to rotate. Um, and do that, and do that, and that gives us a cube. We'll go ahead and cut that. 
bring it over here and place it one above our little X right there. So that gives us this. Um, and then we're going to repeat that. Uh, well, we're going to go ahead and pick a different color. Uh, let's go ahead and choose pink. And we're going to go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces in between. Now this is going to be our handles for when we're working with uh, points that are too small to see. So we're going to go ahead and bring this up one, one, two, three spaces. Um, then we're going to go ahead and rotate it one and go up again. One, one, two, three. All right. So this is our area shrink tool uh, workspace. Now, the reason that we build this is because when you go to shrink things, so I take, I've got a block right here. Let's delete, clean up my space a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and copy this. So I place a voxel here in the center. One, two, three. All right, and it's now in the center of this whole thing. Um, and we're going to use the area shrink tool. Now you can use the expanding um, area. So I could uh, just click here in the center um, and then um, expand using holding down the control key and moving the mouse wheel. I can expand my, my select area. Um, I can use this technique. Sometimes I find that cumbersome or a little bit harder to deal with sometimes. So I like to, that's what these yellow handles are for. So if I select the area uh, smooth voxel tool and I click on two opposing corners, um, now I can click, I can shrink this thing in the middle. And I, honestly, I can click on either the white uh, square that's my target object, or I can click on any of these corners. Um, and you'll see that the first shrink gives me a small cube. Now this is the one that I use for my reactors. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually stop here for a moment and copy this out. Um, grab my select tool cop, uh, and copy it. Come over here, um, paste it in the air right there. So if I have one for later, um, then I'm gonna go back over here again, switch back to my area smooth tool. And I'm gonna shrink again. And you see I have an even smaller cube and then shrink one more time. And now I have a cube that's the smallest cube that the shrink will do. Um, and it is in fact a small cube. It's not a null point. It's, uh, there's a cube in there. And so there's actually eight different lo locations for the vertices. If I go ahead and I grab a reactor, any reactor will do. And I copy it. Helps if I use the right tool. It's sort of a problem. The area shrink tool and the um, select tool have very similar colors, so it's hard to see sometimes. So I go ahead and do that. Now I've selected that little tiny thing, and you can see the little the little cube there in the center. If I move really slowly, hopefully, and pause for a moment, um, and that is in fact the same reactor as is uh, that you would think is right here, but in fact isn't. Um, this one here is is what's called the null point, um, but this is the smallest cube that you can possibly get. And we'll get into what the null point is in some later video, probably. Uh, I mean, well, definitely, but it's going to be later, not now, is the probably. Um, if I drop the reactor around this cube, you see that it changes um, and is now pointing at the corners of this cube. All right. Um, this is really useful for working with offsets, and I'll show you what I mean. So if I pick up this cube right here, and I want to create an offset, so I go one, two, three. Now if I go over one, and I place it, and then I place another one next to it, this second one grows out to meet the first one. All right, and you'll see that it now is moved out to align with this one because again, this is existing dominance. So I've got two voxels next to each other. When I paste this one in, it goes, oh wait, these vertices already exist. I'm going to move these vertices to meet the ones that are there. All right, um, if I then want to, so, so now that I've done that, right, I can copy it by so this one is big enough I can grab it right 
but if I also I can grab it this way and I can copy right and if I undo twice so that removes the second voxel I, voxel I placed that removes the first voxel I placed then I go up and paste it back in now I just have the one voxel right here all right I can also if I cut this using the handles right I can go over one and paste it and then paste it again and it grows out again and again I can copy this and I can undo twice and then I can paste it back up in here again and now I just have this one piece all right so this tool allows gives you handles with which to work this is sort of unnecessary with this particular thing that I just made because um, you can actually it's big enough and clean enough that you can grab it um, yourself but there are situations then we'll talk about them in a minute where that is in fact not true so I'm just cleaning up some garbage right here we don't need any of this all right, so we're going to talk about offset voxels a little bit. I'm going to go up to my wedge right here, and again, we will get into later how to how to build this wedge. But this one right here, um, which is um, my perfect corner, is what I call it. So it is a reactor that defines the corner of the prime voxel. What that means is that this reactor corner right here is the same location as the corner of a voxel. So if I go up to here and I paste this right there and I paste a reactor around it, this corner right here and this corner right here are identical. All right. Obviously the rest of them aren't. Well, what does that mean? So remember, we talked about existing dominance. So if I copy out this piece right here and we go and we place it in the air right there, if I then take this and put it right here, so that first corner that I put in already exists. And I'm now pushing that corner of the voxel over into here. I can copy this and lift it up a little bit more so that you can see it. But it basically looks like I've made a hollow voxel. The whole voxel still exists, right? It's still there, but this one vertice in the in the lower left corner right there has been pushed up into that upper corner. Alright? I can take another voxel. Let's grab a different color. And if I place that voxel on this side, well, no big deal. Okay, that's fine. But let's grab, let's change that color again to here. Now, if I place this there, the one vertice that's been moved, remember that's existing dominance. So this blue one says, wait, that vertice is way over there in that corner, and it creates a voxel that has that in the corner over there, which would look like this. So just the one corner has been moved up and over into that space. All right. Anytime you push a voxel's vertices outside of its prime, we call that an offset or a mega voxel. And uh, when you push all the vertices in, we sometimes call those microvoxels. Um, it's just a name to kind of give an idea of whether it's smaller or larger than the prime voxel. But when it's both, when some of the vertices are pushed in and some of them are pushed out, we kind of call that an offset voxel. Um, so how does all this matter? Well, if I take this point right here and this one right here and we replicate this around the corner here bear with me a moment while I do this so I'm placing it there then I'm rotating it 
Then we're going here and we're placing it again. Then I'm rotating it. Then we're going up and over and over. And then we're doing this again. All right, so now I've defined a reactor that's empty in the middle, but you can sort of see the shape that's going to wind up here. And if I take a cube, um, and we'll go ahead and change its color to something. Um, let's see, let's go for uh, green. And we go up, we place it, we wind up with a flat, right? So this is a flat that is at the top of our voxel. The bottom four vertices are pushed up to meet it. All right. Now, if I take this and I place it in the air, and I uh, go ahead and place that, then we're going to go ahead and change its color. And we're going to place another one below it. And that grows up to meet that one, right? But so this looks like a voxel that's here. But if I copy this, I've actually got the green flat, right? Um, if I want to grab this, I need handles because I can't actually grab the space. Well, actually, I can if I try really hard. If I get right down here, really carefully, maybe if I'm really lucky and don't want to waste too much time trying. There we go. That is where the red voxel actually is, right? Um, it's rendering above because it is offset to meet the green one. If I copy this red one, you see right there, that is an offset voxel. So why do you want one, you say? Why is an offset voxel of any value whatsoever? And the answer is because it's not actually where we think it is, right? It actually exists one voxel below, which means that if I place something else, let's say this voxel right here, here, uh, bugs notwithstanding, and that's a bug, by the way, if I place another one right here, that'll, that'll sort that out, right? So this voxel, this white voxel right here, exists right here. This red one isn't there. It's actually here. It's rendering above it. So the two voxels actually have a space between them. So the two don't distort each other because this one is offset and this one is not. And so where this red actually is, is empty. Hopefully that's not too confusing. We're going to talk a little bit more about this uh, again in future videos, but this one is really about the tools of the trade. Uh, hopefully uh, that's clear. That was Advanced Voxelmancy 102. See you again.